Hey there, it's Miss Courtney. I'm here with another junior Sabbath school. I'm excited to be here with you. I'm going to be going through the PowerPoints. I'm going to just follow along what's in the magazine here and do the same questions it suggests for throughout the week. And I just want to make a note here that you should be studying this on your own as well, memorizing the power texts and reading the scripture and the stories in here. It's highly valuable. It gives you something to do in this time. I know that you're spending so much time at school and doing things online, but I would really encourage you to take a look at this. If nothing else, just jot down the verses that it suggests and, and study over them, pray over them, ask questions to family or friends you're with to get a deeper meaning. It's really important that we ask questions when it comes to the Bible so that we can understand it to the best of our ability. So anyways, that was my little suggestion to you. We're going to start with the power text. For this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. This is from Acts 13, set, uh, verse 47. And so we're going to be looking at Acts a bit today. So it wants you to start off the week on Sunday learning the power text, which is really important to keep the word in your heart. It has a really good idea to write with a non-permanent marker um, on your bathroom um, or bedroom mirror. Um, you can kind of see it every day, read through it. And if you do that for a week, you'll definitely have that memorized. It's so important to memorize scripture and keep it in your heart, um, keeping the, the word of God fresh on your mind. It helps so much, more than you would realize in, in ways that... Um, you know, you might not always notice, but retrospectively, you'll look back and say, oh, my attitude was totally different in that circumstance because I was thinking of this verse. That happens all the time with me, so I know it'll happen with you, so be sure to do that. And then it says to pray, ask God to help you um, treat kindly those who don't believe as you. Um, the verses it's going into here is Saul becoming Paul, right? And, um, you know, he was per persecuting um, Christ's followers. And so it's telling us people don't believe the way we do. There's plenty of people, but that's no reason to persecute them right? No reason to persecute them. So on Monday here, it says read Acts 9 verses 3 and 4. So I'm just going to jump that into that right here. And I am reading from the New King James version of the Bible today. So it's Acts chapter 9 verses 3 and 4. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Wow. Sometimes I wish that God would speak to me that directly, right? It would be nice to hear his voice. But he calls Saul here. There are ways that God talks to us, though. Even if it's not this crazy bright light stopping you in the middle of the road, voice from heaven booming down, God does still speak to us. What are some ways that God speaks to you? The biggest way that God speaks to us is through the Bible, right? And it's amazing to me how the Bible has different things for everyone. Some people like poetry. Some people like stories. God includes them all. So if you pray to have an open heart and look into the Bible, God can speak to you that way. I think that's the best way to seek God's voice. Moving on into verse 5, it says, And he said, Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. Why do you think Saul asked that question? How would you react if you came to realize that you were persecuting God's true followers? And what are ways that you could build up the community of believers? How would it feel to realize that you've been persecuting God's true people? I think it's really important to make sure we pray for God to keep our hearts open so that we can know what is true and we know that scripture is true that's the only thing we can truly count on and i absolutely believe that us in the adventist church absolutely have the closest possible biblical truth but we always have to keep an open heart in mind because as individuals 
right? We can be wrong on some things. We can be wrong in the way that we interpret certain verses or the way we treat people based on certain verses, things like that. As a church, don't believe we have it wrong, but as individuals, we often confuse things and muddle things up. So always be open to God's voice when you're reading the Bible or praying or studying or reading a book. Always focus on what God wants and ask Him to be in your heart to help give you wisdom. That's where God really speaks to us, right? So now we're going to go into verses 6 through 9. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise, go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Then Saul rose from the ground, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no one. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither ate nor drank. The first question here is, what would you have done in Saul's position if you were blinded and told to go to a place you could not see and wait until you received further instructions about what you should do next? I don't know what I would do. I suppose if I saw Jesus in the middle of the road, I would obey, but that's still a really difficult situation to be in. One way to get a look at this in real life is to ask an adult, maybe a parent or aunt and uncle, and see, you know, what did you do in a critical moment like that? Do you have any experiences um, that kind of have that same feel where you have to react to something kind of crazy? I think it would be really helpful to get that insight from them. Moving on to verses um, 10 through 12, it says, Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight, and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he is praying. And in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he may receive his sight. What's amazing about this verse is right away he says, Here I am, Lord. He's already open, ready to listen. I like how here it says, Serve someone today by using your God-given talents to share who Jesus is and what he means to you. And ask God to help you trust him, no matter whom he sends you to serve. So we can trust God when he's calling us to help someone. And sometimes it takes us starting and initiating that process. We can't just sit around and wait to hear something, wait to be interrupted. It's important that we are always looking for ways to serve God and serve others. Okay, moving on to the next verses, 13 through 19. Are you ready? Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered the house, and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. So when he had received food, he was strengthened. Then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. Unbelievable. That's so incredible. So it says here, what is a gift that God has given to you? How are you using it to serve his children? So Ananias, he listened to God, had an open heart. And when God said to serve Paul, he was a little confused at first, but he went ahead and did it. He served this person that was persecuting his friends, persecuting his savior. But when his savior said, minister to him, he did, he did. 
So how would you react if you were asked to serve someone you thought was planning to kill you? I don't know about you, but I, I wouldn't be so quick to do that. I would think, well, he's going to kill me, so no, right? But Ananias had faith in what God was telling him. So today and this week, I challenge you to ask God, how can you serve others, particularly those that are kind of unsuspecting, right? People that you might not think you would normally serve. This can be especially challenging from home, but I know that you're creative enough to figure it out. And maybe ask an adult to help. I think one fantastic way would be to write letters, letters of encouragement or Bible verses, maybe postcards. There's a lot of different things you can do to serve people from home and not to mention your family. So let's read that power text one more time. It comes later in Acts in chapter 13, right? Verse 47. For this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. You are a light to all other people, even other believers. You have the choice to represent God and to serve others. I hope you enjoyed this Sabbath school. I certainly have. Thank you so much for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you next Sabbath. Have a great afternoon. Bye.